the bigger some. Okay. So that's okay. We're gonna record the session as I mentioned. So if everyone could please accept, we'll send this out later. Um, but today, um, if I haven't met any of you, my name is Shannon. I'm the director of community engagement here at Carebound. This marks my, my sixth church. year with the organization. So I'm absolutely honored to be a part of this team as we continue to mobilize San Diego to accelerate cures for cancer in our lifetime. As many of you know, we're able to do this through two signature events. And for our purposes today, we're focusing on Padres held a cause and we're very, very grateful for your participation as volunteers with us to help make it all happen. It wouldn't be possible without you. With me from the Curebound side of things today, I have Riley Johnson, who is our coordinator of community engagement and your primary point of contact for all things volunteering on event day. We also have the director of Padres Pedal the Cause, Megan Waddell, with us as well to help shed some light on event day, share some exciting updates and some goals for us. So what we're going to do is we are going to have Megan share a little bit about what to expect on event day, what we're going to be seeing, and then we're going to dive into our volunteer handbook. This handbook is our Bible for event day for all things volunteering. It is pretty lengthy. We like to share all this information so that you're fully aware of every aspect of event day. You know where to park, what food is available, any questions that participants might be asking you on event day, you have the answers to them. Just know that we uh, will have this for you in a digital format. So you can download it, check it out later. Right now, it's just getting all the information out there to help answer any immediate questions that you might have. But we've got plenty of time for event day, just over a week until then. So with that, I'm gonna pass the mic over to Megan, our Director of Progress Pedal the Cause to share some exciting things. All right, hi everyone. Um, for those of you who have participated in years before, we are expecting a much larger crowd than we have had before. So I just wanna go over where we are looking for registration and kind of the big things that you'll see on event day. Um, our goal this year for registration was 4,100 participants. And to put that in perspective, last year we had about 2,900. So a very big jump in participation. Um, about 1,200 of those people will be on the cycling courses. So split between the four different cycling routes, the biggest one being our 25 mile Coronado Classic. Um, and I know we'll talk about the schedule in just a little bit, but um, you'll when that ride goes off for the 25, you'll see a huge group of people. Um, expect them to be coming into Gallagher Square around 8 or 8.30, a ton of cyclists, um, and then getting in the shoot at 9. So that will be a very big one. Um, and then for the 5K, we have made some changes this year to make it easier for people to participate in the 5K. But for perspective, we had about 900 people. Right. Perception for me. What is Sorry, um, participated in the 5K last year, we had about 900 people. This year, we could see almost 2,000 participants for the 5K. So it will be a lot of bodies, a lot of directing people to the start line and to get people through the shoot. Um, it's just going to be a very full, exciting, fun, energetic day. Um, and so we're excited to welcome all those people and to be bringing in even more money for cancer research. So we'll go over a few more details, but... I do just want to share a quick mission moment with you guys. Just remember why we're here and why we're doing this. Um, there is a man in our community named Jeff Colleen. If any of you are on Team Bumblebee, you're going to know this story already. Um, but he has been a team captain for many years for us and participated. Um, he told me years ago a story about how he was a first responder on 9-11, specifically in Pennsylvania, um, and how he saw a lot of his friends and colleagues, unfortunately, suffering from the side effects of being on site for such a toxic environment, and that many of them have been diagnosed with cancer, lung diseases, um, other respiratory issues as a result of that. Um, and he is going to be on event day sharing his story with us about how subsequently he has also been diagnosed with melanoma as a result of his time um, responding on 9-11. And he is doing very well. Um, he caught it early and he has been getting treatment. But um, just a reminder that there are people out there that are being diagnosed every day and that this is why we're here to try and make a difference. I think Jeff's story is because he was a first responder during a very traumatic time for our country. And um, to be thinking about somebody who was out there to save other people's lives and so um, just human and thinking about other people first 
protect people and make sure that we're doing everything we can to prevent and treat diseases like this. Thank you, Megan. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to hand it back over to Shannon just to set the stage, and then we're going to jump into my details. Thanks, Megan. Thanks for sharing that. So with that, we have a lofty goal of $4 million raised for event day this year. So we're really excited to hit that. We're tracking towards hitting that. And that's hugely in thanks to our 4,100 participants. And that includes you incredible volunteers. So Riley, if you'd like to share your screen, we're going to start diving into this handbook. Feel free to chat any questions that you have right now. We're going to ask that you hold off on unmuting until the end of the presentation. This shouldn't take more than our allotted time. We should be ending right around 1 o'clock. We'd like to end at 12.45 to allow for 15 minutes of Q&A. And then, as you all know, Riley has been in communication with you. You received this invitation from her. Feel free to email her with any follow-up questions. But again, we'll be following up with this in a digital format tomorrow. Great. So the book of our table of contents. We're going to be going over general volunteer information first and foremost, expectations for event day, for you. And then Megan's going to talk through event day details as they are provided to our participants. The reason we share this section in this format is because you're going to be wearing bright yellow shirts on event day that say volunteer. And if any participants walk up to you, we want to make sure that you're able to answer any questions that they might have or simply direct them to one of us or the volunteer check-in or info kiosk. So we're gonna share that information with you. And then we're gonna dive into the specific volunteer positions that we offer. Many of you have registered as a part of a group, so you know exactly where you're gonna be volunteering with us on event day. Others have registered as a shift position, so you'll be arriving during a specific shift, unsure where you're gonna be on event day, so we're going to go through every available option, asking that you remain flexible on event day. If something pops up, we need to pull you into a different location. Or if you're registered for a general shift and something piques your interest during this presentation, feel free to reach out to Riley and we can allocate you to that specific spot. Great. Next slide, please. There we go. Huge, huge, huge shout out to our volunteer presenting sponsor, ResMed. ResMed has been a participant with us, a team of supporters for nine years. This is their ninth year of participation. An interesting fact about Team ResMed is they had 10 countries represented on their team last year. They have a huge reach, huge impact, and 10 countries were represented because we do have a virtual opportunity for our event day as well. I'd like to say that many of them flew in for the event, but maybe that's a future uh, <laughs> realization. <laughs> And they've also raised over $255,000 for the Padres Pedal the Cause event alone in their history of participating with us. So this year we're honored to have them as our presenting um, volunteer program sponsor. If you see anybody in ResMed shirts, feel free to thank them, high five them, give them <laughs> knuckles on the bench too. <laughs> okay, volunteer expectations. First and foremost, this event would not be possible without all of you guys on this call. We're 300 volunteers strong for this event. It is hugely run by our volunteers. So just so much gratitude to the time that you donate. Your family, friends, thank you for helping to make it all possible. We do ask that you honor your commitment. Riley will be sending reminders leading up to event day. We understand that things happen. But if for any reason you're not available to join us, please do let us know by April 1st, which is next Monday, I believe. Okay. Yes, nodding heads next Monday. And if anything happens day of, feel free to send Riley a text, me a text, our emails, our um, cell phone numbers are in our signatures as well. And then, as I mentioned, we do ask that you remain flexible. So on event day, we might need to pull you into a different location. Just let us know if you have any concerns or restrictions. And we, of course, will abide by those as well. But we're all a family on event day. We might pull you guys into different locations as needed. Our number one priority, of course, outside of fundraising for cancer research is to make sure that you all have fun too. So we ask that you enjoy your commitment. If you have any concerns, if you see something um, that doesn't make you happy on event day, please let us know. We wanna make sure everyone is having a safe and fun experience on event day. And now um, into the good stuff, general volunteer info. Parking is at no cost to you all. Parking is available at Peco Park. New this year, you don't even need to print a parking pass. So this is gonna be really great for everyone. You just show up. You can park either in the tailgate lot or Padres Parkade. And you can just say that you're volunteering for the event and they'll let you guys ride in. It is free. 
we do uh, recommend arriving early, uh, probably 15, 30 minutes before your shift to make sure that you find parking. We do have overflow options, but as Megan mentioned at the start of this call, many more participants this year, and we learn as we grow. So just give yourself enough time to park and make your way to your location. Something that I like to point out is that if you are volunteering on site, this parking remains true. If you're volunteering off-site, meeting at one of our aid stations or a separate packet pickup hosted off-site away from Petco Park, you do not need to come to Petco Park to check in. You can go directly to your off-site location to park and check in with the volunteer leads, and we'll get into that a little bit more. Um, okay, let's see here. Volunteer groups. I mentioned that. If you're volunteering at Petco Park, you check in at the East Village Gate. We have a map a little bit later on. And groups volunteering on course, go to your designated volunteer location. Food and beverage. We want to make sure that you are fueled and hydrated for event day. If you're volunteering in a morning shift, we will have coffee and grab-and-go breakfast made available for you and water at each of our stations. If you're volunteering around lunchtime, we have a volunteer zone on event day where we will have sandwiches available for you and snacks. If you're volunteering off-site, you're welcome to the food that is available at the aid stations. Please help yourself to those. Attire, please be comfortable. It is a um, wellness day. Comfortable shoes. We will have shirts available for you wherever you're checking in, whether that's at the volunteer kiosk on site or off site at your aid station. And I always really like to just share this one really heavily. Sunscreen, 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 protect your skin and hats and sunglasses. So now I'm gonna pass the mic over to Megan to talk through the event date details as provided to participants. Again, this is the information that our participants receive in their event handbooks. They're gonna receive their event handbook tomorrow. It is slightly different from the volunteer expectations, but we just wanna make sure you are a wealth of knowledge for our, our participants in case they come up to you. All right, what do we got? Okay, so as Shannon mentioned, the parking is gonna be the same for all participants, but it's the tailgate lot on Imperial and then Padres Parkade on 10th and J. Um, there should be plenty of spots for people, but um, it is run by Ace Parking. And if there is, uh, if the lot is full, they will direct you to the next overflow. Um, for most volunteers, we would advise you to park in tailgate. There's the most parking there. Um, that's the one on Imperial right across from the MTS station. Um, we will have attendance there all day. So um, please feel free and safe to park there. Can participants leave their bikes at Petco Park on Saturday night? Technically, yes. Very few people take advantage of this, but we will be doing packet pickup from 4.30 to 6.30 at Petco Park, and people can leave their bikes in a secure location um, inside of the stadium. This will be uh, probably sparsely attended. Um, we know there's a big convention that's happening the same weekend as Padres Pedal, which will just cause a lot of traffic and people downtown. So um, we're encouraging people to really just bring their bikes on Sunday morning and to check in on Sunday morning, but we may have a few people who want to check their bikes. Um, so then for the schedule of event day, this is when the different rides and routes will start. I don't expect you to memorize this. Um, we'll be making announcements throughout the day. Uh, you will have this printed out. It will be at the volunteer check-in. Um, we actually have big map, uh, big boards, sort of like a, when you go to the mall and you see like a directory, there will also be those in the middle of Gallagher Square that have the times as well. But um, just take a glance so you can see kind of when things are starting. If people do want to change to different cycling routes on Sunday morning, this will mostly be a packet pickup question, um, but they are able to do that. We don't want anybody to be on a course that they feel uncomfortable with, so they just mostly need to check in with us at packet pickup so we can make sure that we note that, um, and they can either go up or down in their cycling distance depending on what they want to do. Um, for packet pickup, we're going to talk about those different off-site locations, but we're doing our main packet pickup on Saturday at UCSD. Um, this is where most people will come and pick up their packets. And then, like I said, we are going to be offering for people to come on Saturday evening to Petco Park if they're already downtown and would like to do so. And then the gates open at 6 a.m. on event day, and people can definitely pick up their packets day of. Okay, we list parking in here like 100 <laughs> times because it's the number one question that we get from people. So here's parking info again, just to reiterate. Um, and then the entrance this year will be at the East Village Gate, which is the gate 
um, at 10th and K Street. So just one gate north of where we were last year, if you guys remember, um, it's just right around like 100 feet north of where we were. You'll definitely see our signage. Very easy for people to find. And that is where the volunteer check-in will be as well. We're going to go over the map in just a few slides, but um, everybody, any spectators, all participants, volunteers will come into that East Village gate. Um, this beyond time for your event is for cyclists. Mostly we need to get them in the chute to make sure that we can get them over the bridge. So for people who are volunteering in the morning, there will be kind of a rush around 845 to really push people to get into the chute. Unfortunately, if people get there after we have started the Coronado Classic, we, we can't let them out on the course because the Coronado Bridge will be reopening. So we really try and get people, if they're walking in slowly, like, hurry, hurry, let's get in the chute. Um, and most people do abide by that. That is also a good call out, likely a location where we would pull volunteers from their location to help support would be at that time where we're like, get everybody into the chute, ringing cowbells, directing them. So that was a good call out, Megan. We you. also will have, we have an announcer that does everything at the start line and the finish line, and he will be also making PA announcements all throughout Gallagher Square. So this would be really in support of like, okay, here we go. It's this way. <laughs> get in the chute. Um, we will talk about the kid zone, but we do have a, a kid zone with a beautiful new Gallagher Square has an amazing jungle gym and kids play area. Um, that will be open from 10 to 2, and we have some fun vendors who will be out there as well. Um, and then the kids challenge is going to be on the field. So all the kids who are signed up for that get to come down onto the field and run the bases like a real baseball player. Um, and we'll show you exactly where that meeting point is for those of you who are running and helping with the kids zone. Um, we ask that everybody brings their ID on event day for really two reasons. One, if you're out on the course and um, something happens or if you um, need to talk to the command center or talk to the SAG, it's always nice to just have your ID on you. Um, but also, if anybody wants to partake in the bar, if they have earned an all-access wristband, they do need to get their ID checked and get a red wristband. We'll show you all of these details in a little bit, but um, everybody needs to make sure they have their ID on them for one of those two reasons. And then the recovery zone is super fun. Um, that's also open from 1030 to 330. And we have massage, we have physical therapy. Um, we have really cool like stretching and high price products from Fitness Quest 10. And we will show you where that is located in a few slides. Okay, so again, this is the event day schedule. It's a lot of different times, but um, this is basically what you'll see on those boards throughout Gallagher Square. We'll have at least two of them. Um, and like we said, we will print this. But if somebody has a question and you're not sure you're kind of walking around, direct them to those boards so they can see exactly when things are happening. In general, the gates open at six and we start the events um, based on what will take people the longest. So the longest cycling route will start first and those go off on the hours, seven, eight, nine, and 10. 10 o'clock is the 5K, and then the spin classes will start every hour after that as well. Um, so lots of moving pieces, lots of different things happening, but know that this will be a resource on event day in multiple locations for people. We will also have hired guest services staff on event day to help with any directional needs for our participants. Those are Padres employees who will be wearing their guest services attire, very easily recognized. They'll be out at the front and throughout the ballpark. So if you guys don't know where to direct anybody, please feel free to direct our guests to guest services. Perfect. Um, and then just to highlight, we do try and weave the mission into everything we do on event day. And so we have a couple of really cool things that will be very easy to see. Um, we have an in honor of wall that people can sign to indicate who they're riding in honor of or walking in honor of. Um, it's a 40 feet long wall this year. So it will be a huge piece. You won't miss it. Um, and then we also are adding a survivor bell this year. So for anybody who has gone through or is currently going through cancer treatment, they can come over and ring the bell and get a living proof t-shirt. Um, it's a really beautiful moment to recognize their fight. Um, it's a really cool photo and people can pick up their shirts at that tent. It's It will be the first thing you see when you come through the gates in the morning. Okay, just a couple more things. So we do have a bike corral that when people get off their bikes from the cycling routes, we encourage people to check their bikes in at the bike corral so that we don't have a sea of bikes out in Gallagher Square. Um, it's right next to the entrance. They will see it as they're walking in, but we really try and push people to check their bikes in there so they're safe, they're secure. Um, and we, like I said, do not have thousands of bikes out just in the square. Um, similarly, we do have a, a gear check. 
So if they have a backpack, if they have extra clothes, any of that, they can check that in. It's right next to packet pickup um, and they just use their wristbands to be able to check that in. So um, in and out, that's very simple. Um, and then we do have all access wristbands. This is a little bit of a shift from years past. All access wristbands are uh, awarded to participants who either commit to or raise $250 or above. So if you're a cyclist, if you're a spinner, you've already awarded that, you've already earned that. And then for five cares, we do ask that you make that commitment or you fundraise to get this beautiful yellow wristband. Um, that will be all indicated at packet pickup. We just want you guys to be aware no matter where you're at, these people with the yellow wristbands have access to everything. And if somebody is asking how to get one of those, you just direct them back to packet pickup and we will handle it up there with them. Um, you can also, participants can also purchase a food only wristband, which just gets you access to the food vendors. Um, and that's a white wristband. Again, this will all be very clearly laid out um, at packet pickup and on the boards. But um, if anybody's asking about how they get a wristband, just send them back to packet pickup. Okay, parking again. Um, bike maintenance, we have a, a mechanic on site that you will see in the map, but uh, for people who need a new tire or chain or whatever to send them over to the mechanic, we'll show you where that is. Um, we already talked about the in honor of walls. And then the course maps, this is really for participants who are nervous about the course. They can download these ahead of time, but our courses are very fully signed. Um, I highly doubt you guys will get any questions about courses on event day, but uh, this is in the handbook that they will all get tomorrow. Okay, I think we could probably skip this one. We've talked about most of these things. Um, this is what the bibs will look like. So everybody who is going to go out on a course needs to be wearing a bib. The bottom right one, the yellow one is for cyclists. They will attach that to the front of their bikes. Um, they will all know how to do this. Most cyclists have done this before. And then the top left is for 5Kers. They're going to pin that on with safety pins. Um, so you'll see everybody should have one of these bibs on when they get in the shoot. Okay, food menu for the day. Um, we'll just go through this quickly. Basically, there are tons of food options for people to enjoy who have an all-access wristband. Again, they need to have that to enjoy food and beverage or a $40 food only wristband. Um, but we have Prince Street Pizza, we have the kebab shop doing chicken and rice. Um, we'll have Northgate Market, who's gonna have sandwiches, um, Samazon acai popsicles, the list goes on. Um, you guys can review this later, but we have also tons of beer and beverage partners that will be available at the bar. As a reminder for our volunteers as well, I love that comment handles. Okay, I'll come. <laughs> Um, as for our volunteers, so we do have a volunteer zone again with your food. If you are done volunteering by the time lunchtime hits, if you um, are interested in the food and beverage wristband, you can purchase that $40 one to enjoy these upgraded selections. As volunteers, you do also have the opportunity to fundraise. So if you fundraise $250 as a volunteer, you get access to all of this as well. We just ask that you don't drink any of the alcoholic beverages while wearing your volunteer shirt. Just to set that. Great. Okay, I promise you're going to be done listening to me talk soon. <laughs> um, these are our top fundraiser levels. So you'll see people out on event day who specifically have on a yellow jersey. That means they've raised five thousand dollars or more. We love to just pour on the love for those people um, who are going above and beyond to to raise a little extra money. And we will talk about these fundraising levels at our afternoon program. But um, the biggest thing is if you see somebody in a yellow jersey, give them a high five and make sure they feel the love. Okay, I think this is where it all sort of comes together for you guys. Um, this is the venue map. So you'll see the event entrance and exit over here on the right-hand side, that's East Village Gate. And the biggest thing for you to know is the first thing you'll see is packet pickup and volunteer check-in. There will be a big tent sign that says volunteer check-in. That's where you go in the morning to get directed and to get your instructions. Um, and everything is taking place in Gallagher Square this year. So you should be able to stand at volunteer check-in and kind of see everything that's going on. Um, and so I would just review this map ahead of time and make sure you feel acquainted with it and ask any questions of Riley ahead of time or at volunteer check-in. It's gonna be incredible. We're gonna transition now to our volunteer positions leading up to event day. So Megan, thank you for your time explaining a little bit more about participant side of things. Now we're gonna dive into the volunteer side of things. 
Um, the next few slides, we have quite a few. Just note that they all follow the same layout. So what we're going to share with each position is the shifts that are available, the lead that we have identified, the general overview of what to expect in that shift, and any important notes. So we're going to go through this pretty quickly just to make sure we're pacing on time. But just note your zone. Also, um, remember, we will be sending this out to you with a QR code. So you can always pull that up on your phone on event day if need be. Questions at the end, please. We'll leave 15 minutes for questions. Deb Riley. I'll oh, take this friends. one too. I promise <laughs> this is the last time you're going to hear from me. Um, so packet pickup is presented by VD this year. Um, and for any, any of you who have ever done an athletic event, people want to get their packets early. So we do have our main packet pickup that will take place Saturday, April 6th at UCSD. Um, and the point of this is to welcome people, make sure they get all of the gear that they need, answer any questions that they have, and just get them really excited for event day. So we will do the complete setup of packet pickup, and then we will have a little training on site. We have some awesome volunteer leads who have done this year after year for us. And so we'll make sure that you guys feel comfortable and like you can answer any questions. And we will also have a ton of staff support. So if there's something that you don't know how to answer, you can point to one of us and we'll make sure to jump in and help you. Um, but like I said, you will be fully trained on the morning of. It's a very fun experience. Um, and so just come prepared to be flexible and ask any questions that you have. Awesome. Thanks, Megan. I do also want to point out that the Saturday, April 6th, we do have a couple more opportunities um, for volunteers that are needed. We need a ton of volunteers at the UCSD packet pickup. So if you know of any friends, family that are available, you can send them my way and we'll get them registered for that. To move on and jump into volunteer zones, um, I'm just going to go over really quick a couple and then Shannon's going to jump in on the end to finish it off. Um, but let's get started with bike corral. So this one is going to be staffed by Padres event crew. So nobody here should be signed up for bike corral. This is just more so for your awareness that these are going to be right outside East Village Gate for anyone you need to direct to set up their bikes. Um, well, like I said, we'll have event crew here in the morning shift and then for also two more shifts in the afternoon. Um, there will be security in this area for those wondering if their stuff will be managed by somebody. The next one is going to be the cheerleaders. Um, we have just a couple shout outs for groups is the TVIA, Orange Theory, and Lululemon. They're going to be mainly cheering at our 5K course, um, which we're really excited to have them there. They're going to bring lots of energy. Those of you that are registered for cheerleaders, we're also going to be asking you all to bring lots of energy for event day. This is going to be really exciting because we're going to be cheering right in the middle of Gallagher Square. So we're excited to have you all. We need lots of loud voices, ringing the cowbells that we have, all the things. Um, we have three shifts for these. This is also one I want to notify that we're going to need more people for too. If you have any family and friends, it's really fun, this opportunity to have friends with you, to just kind of get excited together, cheer for everybody, things like that. So if you have anyone else that would be interested in this, you can send them my way again. Um, we've also indicated little cowbells down here that you'll be able to use, but this one is pretty self-explanatory. Um, the next one we have is a really exciting one we're going to have this year. This is going to be new. It's called the Living Proof and Cure Bound Tent. Living Proof is for those cancer survivors or thrivers who are going to be coming to this booth to grab t-shirts. Um, we have special bracelets that we're going to be making. Shannon and I are wearing our awesome friendship bracelets that say Cure Bound on them. We'll be making those tonight. And if you have any downtime or want to make more of these, we'll have opportunities for that on event day at this Living Proof, proof booth. Um, this is also going to be the CureBound tent booth. So this is information about CureBound, things like that. Um, anyone will come to this tent for questions. Um, I do want to highlight that this is going to be pretty, oops, let me go back really quick. This is going to be right in the middle of Gallagher Square too. So you'll be able to see this. It'll be right next to the survivor bell, which will be a great indication about where this tent is. Food and beverage. So I know Megan covered a little bit of this earlier. I just want to reiterate a little more description below. We're going to need lots of help. We have right now we have six volunteers, which is more than we even need. So that is amazing for the food and beverage because we're going to need a lot of help in the breakfast um, for the grab and go when participants arrive um, and when they get ready to leave for their courses. Um, this is going to be mostly in Power Alley where all the food vendors will be. Uh, we always want to make sure that the food area is organized, uh, making sure it's looking good, keeping it clean, um, everything remains stocked. Um, 
I'll so, add with this location as well that you'll notice at the top, we do have Delaware North Services. She's the catering partner of the San Diego Padres, in addition to guest services in this section. The reason we have this zone so fully staffed is because you can imagine when cyclists get off their bikes and 5 cares are done, they're really excited to get some food. So <laughs> if we pull you in as a volunteer in this zone, it really is just to be our eyes on, to flag anything that you see that we might need to jump in on running out of food, individuals who don't have a wristband grabbing food. We want to make sure that it's going to be open there and that everybody's happy and fueled for the rest of the day. Awesome. Yeah, those are great points, Shannon. Also in, included with Delaware North, event crew is also going to be there to support volunteers and things like that so they can help um, as well. And then I also want to notice, note that we're going to have, um, for our all access food and beverage wristbands, we'll have guest services there checking um, to make sure that everyone that's in the food vendor has their appropriate wristband too. All righty. Same thing, um, going back to the wristbands and things like this, this is going to be for the lunch service. Um, Kyle will be our lead. We'll have DNC and event crew also there to help just like the morning. Um, we'll have nine volunteers here, which is also more than we need, uh, which is amazing. We're going to need lots of help, especially like how Shannon noticed, we're going to have a lot of cyclists who are going to be hungry when they come back for the ride. So that'll be good. Um, they also, for the beverage, they're going to be needing their wristbands and getting checked in at the kiosk. To note down here, you're going to see this gray wristband for the 21 and plus. This is actually going to be red on event day. So I didn't want to note that, but you're going to be sending them to get their IDs checked um, between 1030 and 330. Again, all, asset, all access food and beverage wristbands will have this yellow one here. Um, to get these, you can send them to the merchandise tent. Um, or have their volunteer lead help you send them to the merchandise tent, or they can even reach out to us and we can get them started. Um, let's see, anything else you'd want to know there? I feel like we covered a lot on food and beverage today. <laughs> All right, gear check. This is going to be led by Christina Hall. We have three shifts here um, starting in the morning at 5.30, 9.30, and 12.30. This is mostly staffed uh, with other Padres volunteer teams, so shout out to that team if you're online right now. Um, this is just going to be bringing participants their items that they checked in when they first arrived. Um, they will need to have their items clearly marked with the participant's bib number and the tag um, that is to their bag. We'll also run through this process. So since Christina is the lead there, she'll be running through the gear check process with all the volunteers supporting this station so that you'll be fully prepared when checking bags and items for participants. From a servant standpoint in this zone, I believe a lot of the individuals who are doing gear check this year have done it in the past as well, but we just like to over communicate if somebody is dropping off gear with you, the timeline of things. So if they're doing a cycling event, we have two stops along the route where they can drop their gear. So they start in the morning, it's really cold, they have a big jacket on, they get to the third aid station, they want to drop that off so they're not sweating the rest of their ride. That is available for them, but we like to set expectations that their gear might not get, might not get back to the ballpark until the end of the day. If for some reason they don't get it in time, they need to head home, we will have that for them to pick up later the next week. Awesome. Fantastic, Ed. For guest services, this is going to be staffed on event day too. So most of you might not be um, at this position, but it's good to know so that if you have any questions, you can go straight to the guest services team. They're going to be wearing brown, um, similar to what the guest service team wears on Padres baseball game days. They're going to be um, in the same outfits if you have questions for them. Um, they'll have three shifts throughout the day, so they'll be constantly available. Um, they'll be in the food and beverage and as well as like other roaming around throughout the Gallagher Square. Um, we're going to have greeters outside of East Village Gate, so that'll be covered. And then within, like I said, within Gallagher Square and Power Alley, we'll have them all roaming around as well if they need to answer any questions or if you want to direct them to their guest services. Kids Owning Kids Challenge. I do want to also note that this one, um, I'll be leading it, but I want to note that we're going to be needing lots more volunteers here as well. We have some pretty good, awesome volunteers ready to go on event day, and we'd love to see more as well to add to the excitement, especially in the kids zone and especially for our kids challenge. Um, this is going to be run in two shifts. We're going to have 15 volunteers each, one starting at nine to 12. 
and then another one from 1130 to 230. I want to note that in this transition here is when we're going to be starting the kids challenge. So the kids challenge is going to start at 12. We're going to have all participants line up around 1145. So it's going to be crucial at the end of the shifts to be making sure you're helping lead and then having a smooth transition between the sh second shift um, for this kids zone and kids challenge. Um, like I said, we can run through the schedule right here, but just noting again, um, 9 a.m. is when volunteers are going to arrive. Kid Zone opens up at 10 a.m. 11.45 is when the Kid Challenge participants are going to be lighting up. 12 o'clock, the Kids Challenge starts. They're going to run the bases for about 30 minutes, and then we'll close at around 10.30. That's just the run of show for this. If you have any questions, too, about timing, please let me know. Um, those would be good questions to flag. Two things on the Kate Zone. Please tell your family and friends, children, grandchildren that this is available. It's at no cost to be a part of the Kate Zone. It's a really great way to get the family engaged. Even if you're not participating, we welcome you to come as a spectator to cheer people on. We're going to have face painters, superheroes, mm -hmm. bubbles everywhere. It really is a great way for the whole family to enjoy the day. And I also wanted to shout out Jamie Rubenstein, who's on the call. He's going to be our MC for the Kids Challenge, Kids Run the Bases. So thank you, Jamie, for that. Awesome. And to add to that, we're also going to have a toy company named Marky Sparky Toys, who's going to be on the wiffle ball field, having toys is there to continue the excitement too. So that'll be awesome. Last one, and then I'm going to pass it off to Shannon, is going to be the merchandise tent. These are going to be busy, busy, busy on event day. And so Paige is going to be our volunteer lead. We're going to have three shifts starting at 530. Again, another one at 930 and then another shift at 130 to end the day. The merchandise tent will be within Gallagher Square in front of the Bumblebee building. So right when you walk into um, through East Village Gate, you're going to walk forward. You'll probably see the bell. And then to your right hand side, you'll see the merchandise tent. It's going to be right there, ready to go um, on event day. Um, our volunteer lead, if things get backed up, you can reach out to Kyle and I for things like that. But volunteers in general, you're going to be setting up the tent, helping people get the sizes they need from stock, um, answering any questions on pricing and making the sale, which would be wonderful. <laughs> and then if there's no sizing or anything, like I said, you can reach out to your volunteer lead who will then reach out to Kyle and I about sizing and merchandise from there. And volunteers, please feel free, and if you're not at this zone, to check out the merch tent. We've got some really great stuff. Yeah. We'd love to see you representing Carebound year-round, but um, it's a great spot for event day. Definitely. I also want to know, again, how we said about the all-access wristbands, including the merchandise we're going to be selling. We're also going to be having our event day wristbands, so the all-access and the food-only wristbands will also be sold here, too. So it might get pretty busy. Wanted to flag that in addition to selling merch. Recovery zone. All Shannon, right. Take it away. Recovery zone is one of my favorite parts for participants on event day because it's really a unique experience. Every participant who fundraises $250 or more, or a volunteer who uh, raises $250 or more, you get access to our recovery zone sponsored by Debt AMG. This has physical therapy, this has stretching, it has 10 minute massages. It's a really great zone for our participants and a unique experience, as I said. So for the volunteers who are dedicated to this zone, we ask that you are um, really focused on the service of the area, welcoming all who come to enjoy what we're offering there, and also making sure that our vendors are happy, they have everything that they need, and flagging Kyle, who's the volunteer lead in this location, in case there's anything that needs to be updated, cleaned, or changed there. It's going to be at the beach, down the stairs from the Kobe Bar, which um, we can point out on the map later on. We noted registration, so we'll fly through this one, but it's presented by Becton Dickinson, our BD sponsor. We have two incredible volunteer leads if they're on this call. Thank you, Diane and Willie. They're pros. They've been a part of this for many years. We have the high-level registration steps here. This page will be printed for all of our volunteers right next to the computer when you arrive. So no need to memorize this. <laughs> we will be there to help you, train you, and this will be right next to you for your cheat sheet. Ride marshals. So for any ride marshals on the call, we have individuals who are donating their time as cyclists for event day. These ride marshals are vital to the safety of our participants. They are on the route to make sure that participants are following the rules of the road. If somebody gets a flat, 
if someone needs anything on the side of the road, that's what our SAG and our ride marshals are for. So thank you to everyone who is a registered ride marshal. Those individuals at packet pickups, any of the packet pickups, when you pick up your gear, you'll get that green jersey right there to help easily identify you on the course. You will also get CO2 cartridges as well when you check in. So your primary responsibility is making sure that everyone is being safe on the road. You'll notice that big red cell phone number listed there. If there are any issues on the course, if somebody is on the side of the road and they don't have another tire, they need CO2, give us a call at that command center line and we'll make sure that SAG gets out to you and we get the support that you need. We do have nurse support at every single aid station. Thank you, UC San Diego Health, for providing that service. And then the Coronado Bridge Closer, we'd like to call attention to this as well. It is vital that we meet the deadlines for the Coronado Bridge Closure because we need to open it back up <laughs> for cars on the road. So we do ask that our ride marshals um, really take the end of that route to make sure everybody gets up and over safely. Great, a little bit more for our ride marshals. Please take the time to read through this. But very generally, as you know, since you're all cyclists, our ride marshals, Follow the rules of the road, stop at stop signs, always, always wear a helmet, make sure you carry your ID and insurance card, all the good things. Make sure you're following bike path safety protocols, pay attention to the road conditions. If you see anything that is um, out of the norm or is a concern for our participants, please call the command center and let us know. Railroad tracks, please pay attention to our railroad tracks. If you feel the need to hop off your bike, and flag something down for participants as they go by, please do so and call the command center so that we can make sure everyone is safe. The course signage is listed here. Um, if anybody's interested, Megan had mentioned that we have the GPS links earlier on, but if somebody's checking in a packet pickup and they're like, how am I gonna know where to turn? You can let them know that the routes are very well labeled and we have signs like these along the entire course identifying exactly where to turn on event day. To close out our ride marshals, we do have those strict end times, cutoff times for each of our aid stations. Those are listed here. Please take the time to note all of these. They are mandatory at the end of rides. Um, if cyclists are going a little too slow, we will have to pick them up with our SAG vehicles to take them back to Petco Park, which isn't a huge issue because then they get to enjoy event day, live music, enjoy some beverages, and have a good day. A quick shout out to some of our course sponsors here as well. Okay, moving on, spin assistance. As you well know, we have cycling events on the roads, but we also have our stationary cycling event at Petco Park. We've got four different hour-long spin classes on event day. Those instructed instructors are listed at the bottom of this page here. But if you are a spin assistant on event day, we ask that you check in with Andrea Anderson in the spin zone and that you help support setup. You help support the turnover in between each event and you welcome all the participants on event day. It's a really exciting one with a live DJ, and it's gonna be in a different location this year. Last year was on the top of Western Metal Building. This year, it's gonna be in Palm Court Plaza, underneath the palm trees, iconic to San Diego, <laughs> a nice breeze. It'll be lovely this year. Team experience, we had mentioned, we do have guest service staff hired for this zone, but we might pull additional volunteers in help support. We've got over 100 corporate teams this year. That's not including our family friend teams as well. I believe we have eight teams that have over 100 participants. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these teams have earned incredible experiences with their team tents. We have volunteers and guest service staff designated to check in with those tents, see if they have any questions, help make sure they're all clean, um, so this page highlights a few of those locations and what the needs are there. If you're interested in becoming a part of the team experience here and you love the service aspect of this event, let Riley know. We can move you into this zone. Okay, volunteer check-in. This one we like to know everybody who's registered to be a part of the volunteer side of volunteer check-in. As soon as you check in, we're going to have two lists for you alphabetical order and by zone. When volunteers come up to you, you'll check them in, you'll get them the right t-shirt size. And we just wanna make sure you're very familiar with the layout of the event. When you arrive on event day, feel free to flag myself or Riley and we can walk you through the layout to get you more familiar with the event. 
but you will be the ones checking in all of our amazing volunteers, getting them the shirts and making sure they know where they're going, where their zone is and what their responsibilities are. Will call is gonna be right next to the volunteer zone. So we'll see some overlap in our volunteers. This section is located right when you walk in, we do have a will call for our VIPs, for our sponsors, their names are on a list. This is gonna be really key around lead, but we're highlighting it here in case we need to pull any volunteers in to help support. There will be a list, there will be wristbands to hand out. We just ask that you check the individual's ID when they walk up, give them their wristband and they'll be on their way. 5K aid station and cheerleaders. We've talked a lot about the 5K already, and that's because it is a huge event this year. We're expecting 2,000 individuals along this course, which is well over double what we did last year. So we're highlighting a few different groups here who are gonna be helping support in a few different ways. We've got the aid stations along the course, cheerleading zones along the course, directional opportunities along the course. So if you're volunteering with a group for the 5K, or if you're interested in supporting the 5K in a specific way, let us know. We'll actually be connecting with you one-on-one -on -one after these calls this week, just to make sure you know where to go along the course. But first and foremost, when you arrive on event day, you'll check in at the volunteer check-in, and we'll make sure you have everything that you need to be along the course and supporting that 5K. Okay, so that was a lot about on-site at Petco Park. We're gonna open up questions in just a few minutes. I know we're just at 12.48, so two minutes to go over our volunteer positions for aid stations. If you go to the next slide, Riley. I'm gonna go deep into this one page, but know that we have four different aid stations. They follow this same layout. So when you receive this tomorrow, if you're a volunteer at any of our aid stations, please take note of your specific aid station and let us know if you have any questions. For each of these pages, we lay out very specific details, including the location. Remember that that location is where you will arrive the day of your volunteerism. You do not need to go to Petco Park. So for aid station one, Bikeway Village, you will arrive at 535 Florence Street in Imperial Beach. We do, note, we do note a few key times, our captain arrival time. And for this group, what's most important is the volunteer start shift and the volunteer end shift. We have some exciting details like how many riders are going to go through this aid station? How many people are we going to expect? What time are they going to arrive so we make sure everything is set up in time? What time is the last rider expected to come through? All of those details are listed here. This will be printed on site for you so that you know exactly what to expect. And of course, we want to make sure that everyone is being safe. So we've got a lot of day of contacts here. Feel free to save these numbers in your cell phones and reach out to our contact, Julia Dugan, who is on the Padres Pedal, the cause staff, helping to support all the aid stations. She's the one, if you're having issues finding parking the morning of, or if you're not sure if you arrived to the right location, you can text and call Julia and she'll get you there safely. We also list things that are provided on site. This is primarily for our captain to make sure that that checklist is paid attention to on event day. And then the volunteer roles, key roles are setting up, cleaning up, making sure at certain locations, if there is a gear drop available, some of you will be asked to support that gear check. And then at the end of each of these pages, there is a specific note whether or not there's gonna be food available, or if we need to be paying extra careful attention to any of our partner's locations. Um, those are all noted in each of these pages. So Riley, if you wanna just quickly spend like 10 seconds on each slide for the next few slides. Yeah. So we have aid station two with Mountain Hawk, all the same details. Aid station three at William Upper College. Aid station four at Sweetwater. And then the hydration stops along the 5K. Now the 5K is the one unique one where you do check in at Petco Park and then we'll have you walk over to those locations. You are welcome to go straight to those locations, but parking is much easier at the park in Brown Ballpark. Great, so we're gonna start diving into questions and I see one right here, but before we dive into that, another huge thank you to everyone who helps to make this event possible. If you go to the next slide, Riley. Mm -hmm. I also wanna make sure we shout out all of our partners and our sponsors. I noticed Cassie from Edward Jones on the call. Edward Jones has been a team of supporters for many, many years. I'd love to shout them out because they're one of our largest partners this year in a big way, not only because of their team support, but their dedication to Accelerating Cures for Cancer 
across the world. They support Pedal the Cause in St. Louis, now here in San Diego. So thank you, Team Edward Jones, and to all the other teams that helped to support and make this event possible. Our sponsors are the reason that we're able to donate 100% of every dollar raised to cancer research. So a huge thank you. Awesome. Great. If you want to stop sharing the screen, Riley, we're going to dive into some questions. I see some rolling in. So we're going to start with our queue here. I see some questions about confirming the station you'll be volunteering at. I'm going to, you can look that up right now on your Padres Pedal the Cause profile. It's the account that you made when you first, first registered. I'm also next week, you're going to be getting confirmations earlier in the week about more details of timing, when to get there, the confirmation of what shift you're going to be doing um, and things like that. So you'll be getting those emails from me early next week to confirm your shift time um, and which shift you'll be volunteering at. So those were great questions. I want to shout out Cassie. We're also really excited to be in Padres Pedal again this year. It's just so exciting every year and to see all the volunteers, it wouldn't be made possible without you all. And so we're just really thankful for you all to be here on this call and even joining us on event day. It'll be great. Is there any other questions you can, if you have any other questions, you can just feel free to drop them in the chat. You can take yourself off mute and ask them out loud whatever is most helpful, but want to make sure you hop, feel free. Um, Rylan, I will be here up until one o'clock to answer any questions that you might have. I'll also flag Paige and Bull, who's on the call is Curebound's newest intern. Mm -hmm. um, this will be her first week with us. And so we're really excited to have her on board. If another familiar face on this call, if you need to flag Paige down on the vent day, please do. Awesome. Okay, sorry. If I I've got a question. Oh, go ahead, Reed. Uh, as a course marshal, uh, where do we pick up spare tubes and CO2? That will all be available when wherever you choose to pick up your packet. So you stay okay. on Saturday all right. morning. Thank you. Yes. Where or when can I pick up the volunteer t-shirt? That will be wherever you check in. So if you're donating your time on site at Petco Park, that'll be at the volunteer check-in kiosk. If you're donating your time off site, that'll be at the aid station itself. You'll make sure you check in so they can mark your name off that you've attended and then they'll give you your shirts. Awesome. I see a question about um, check-in. I'm I'm they could I'm gonna answer this two different ways. One, we'll have packet pickups Saturday and Sunday. We do need more help on the Saturday packet pickups. If anyone's available, you can reach out to me and I'll send you the link to register for that both at UCSD and Petco Park in the evening. Sunday, we will also have opportunities for packet pickups and check-in too. I hope that answered that question as well. Jamie's asking, confirming for teammates' sake, upping your fundraising goal doesn't commit your credit card to that new higher goal, correct? That is correct. You can increase your goal online to however high your heart desires, you will not be charged the difference. The only way that you would be charged to your credit card is if you don't hit your fundraising commitment, which you chose upon your registration. And we're happy to confirm that. If you send us a note, we can confirm that. Awesome. There's another question about parking um, for packet pickups. Yes, we'll have parking free for all volunteers that are helping at any packet pickup, especially the one at Pego Park. UCSD will have free parking um, and things like that. That was a great question. Les, I would like to sign up for Kids Challenge. Should I update my profile? Les, we will do that for you. Les Ortega? Yep. And Les, um, if you want to go ahead and chat us where we can reach out later on which specific time you're available. Kids Challenge. Thank you, Les. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Nine. Perfect. Also, if you have any other friends or family, I know I've said this earlier too, but if you have anyone else that wants to volunteer or you think would be a good fit at any of these positions that we've covered, please send them straight to me. We'd be happy to welcome any volunteers. The more help, the merrier, and the more smiling faces we have on event day, that's even better. Great question. For the telephone number to call for volunteers for Saturday packet pickup, I'm going to be sending out an email for all of those who have registered as a volunteer for Saturday Packet Pickup. That'll include your uh, main contact, addresses, parking, maps, things like that. So you'll be getting those early next week as well. Um, you can always call me for Saturday Packet Pickups. I'll be at both of them as well. Um, and we'll also have Megan and Liz, um, but definitely reach out to me if you have any questions for Saturday Packet Pickup. And that's a great point, Adele, a general rule of thumb. Um, texting is probably the best way to reach us on Potter's Pedal Event Day. 
mainly because of the noise on the event day um, itself and the flow that we receive. Text us if you need us. Please check in at the Curebound info tent. We will always have a representative there for any questions as well as the volunteer check-in. Awesome, Jody. I see you also want to do the kids challenge. I'll make a note of that as well. I love it. The kids zone is one of my favorite locations. So I love that everyone's having the enthusiasm behind it. It seriously brings a smile to my face. Uh, there on the day. It'll be so great. And I'll also, Jody, I'll send you the link to register. Actually, I think I can, let me just drop the link in the chat for anyone who needs it. I have it right here. The link I'm going to put in the chat right now is the link to register for any of the packet pickup opportunities on Saturday. So this isn't packet pickup on Sunday of event day. The link I just dropped in the chat is packet pickups for um, any other days leading up to event day. So to flagging, that's April 3rd, April 4th, and Saturday, April 6th. Um, you can take a look at those and it has all of the availability left there. Um, the more- Okay, and so- if I have friends that would want to do like the packet pickup help with that, would I just give them that link to, to, to do? Perfect. Yeah. You can just text them that link and that would be wonderful. We'd be thrilled. Okay. Cause yeah. Cause I think I have a couple people that would be willing to do that. So awesome. Thank you so much, Jody. Yeah. You can just send them that link and they'll be able to register. Oh yeah. These are all the teachers of my life, which includes me as a retired one. That's why I want to do the kids on them. I'll do the kids on <laughs> So, okay, cool. Yeah. As a former teacher myself, I've been trying to rally all of my family yeah. and friends who have also been teachers too. So it'd be exciting to have you all out there. <laughs> I know we have two more minutes. Please keep the questions flowing until we close. But I did also want to mention two upcoming events that I wanted to make sure you're all aware of as community members. We are having our next Gearbound Connects on April 17th. This is a free event. It's an opportunity for everyone to hear from um, very brilliant minds on the topic of AI and cancer. That's gonna be on April 17th. I'll have Riley include that link in a follow-up post Padres Pedal in case you're interested in joining us, it's open to the public. Um, again, we have tonight's event. If you're available to join us and say hello, very informal. Food will be provided in the first drink at Ballas Point in Miramar. And then finally, we're going to have Kira Night at the ballpark with the San Diego Padres on June 21st. So we'll send all of these dates and details, but we're going to be unveiling the total raise from this year's Padres Pedal to Cause on the field on June 21st. Awesome. And I see Joanna was also put in the chat to also log in for the kids challenge. If you could just send her email or have her email me at Riley at curebound.org, that would be wonderful. And I'll get her um, Joanna registered as well for the kids challenge. Great, everyone. Looks like that's about it. Thank you all very much. We'll see you in just over a week. We can't give enough gratitude and praise. You all mean the world to us making this event possible. And we hope to see you very soon. Have a great one. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.